if you are a Democrat running for president, there's already one rule. Do not take any votes for granted. That is why eight of the candidates running for the 2020 nomination showed up at the She the People presidential forum in Houston, organized by women voters of color. Senator Bernie Sanders learned a couple of other things at that event. Uh, answer the question you were asked and do not name drop Dr. King. What do you believe is the federal government's role to fight against the rise of white nationalism and white terrorist acts? And how do you plan to lead on that in your first year as president? Okay. Thank you. First of all, but we have got to make it very clear that the type of demagoguery we are seeing from the Trump administration is not what this country is about. And I will do everything that I can to help lead this country in a direction that ends all forms of discrimination. The, the core of the, the question is about, as president, what would you do with the rise of white supremacist violence right. to protect our communities? Absolutely. You know, as somebody who, I, I know I date myself a little bit here, but I actually was at the March on Washington with Dr. King back in 1963. And as somebody who actively supported Jesse Jackson's campaign as one of the few white elected officials to do so in 88, I have dedicated my life to the fight against racism and sexism and discrimination of all forms. Sayu Bojwani is the woman who asked the question. She is the former New York City Commissioner of Immigrant Affairs and is the founder and president of New American Leaders. So, Sayu, thank you so much for, for coming through. And you really asked the question. You even had to have an assist from on stage because it sounds like he wasn't answering your question. Were you satisfied with his answer? Uh, absolutely not. I certainly wasn't satisfied with the first part of his answer. I think that, you know, I came to that question because in my work with immigrant communities and with people of color, there is just this incredible sadness and fear that has developed over the last few years as we've watched churches being burned, as we watch our young people being killed by police, as we watch our young children being caged. And I brought to that question the weight and the feeling of so many of those conversations. And I didn't feel that we were being seen or heard in that answer. But yet, when you look at the totality of everyone running for president, you have a lot of the, the men, uh, white men, at the top of the pack, Senator Sanders, now Joe Biden, which reminds me of something. I wanted to read this quote from you. Alexis Grinnell is a writer, uh, and she wrote this piece in The Daily Beast, saying, while Biden and Sanders are well-established candidates with decades of public service and national name recognition, it is galling to see previously obscure men with limited accomplishments like Beto and Mayor Pete leapfrog over women whose outsized accomplishments and respective resumes would put most people to shame. Yeah. Well, I'll say two things about that. First, there is a tendency to look at the people who are already in leadership and think that our future leaders should look just like them. And so there is obviously, a, we see a lot of white men in leadership and we look at any white man and think that they too can lead uh, and forget that there are systemic reasons why white men are the people in power. And just to bring it back to the question that Bernie Sanders was asked, I think for every presidential candidate, it's just not enough to have a diverse staff. It's not enough to talk about how you're going to stand up against racism. We really need to see very specific things that are going to happen to make us feel that we are going to be protected by the, by the future president. So we're talking about things like, how are you going to create a national task force to respond to white nationalism? How are you going to address systemic white racism in government agencies? How are you going to make sure that this rampant disease of white nationalism is going to get responded to? So given all of that, you spent the day at she the people. You saw a bunch of people who'd like to be president on that stage. Who impressed you? Well, I think it would, it's generally agreed that Elizabeth Warren won over the audience. I mean, if you were in the room, yeah. the energy was electric throughout the day. But what Elizabeth Warren did was really give us proof that she understood our concerns, connected her own experience to ours, and most importantly, had very specific plans. So we can't take voters for granted and assume that we can just talk in platitudes and generalizations. You want something? She understood that. She brought it. Sayu, thank you thank so you. much.